The term ragu conjures up thoughts of a rich, meaty, tomato-based sauce. But before the early 1800s, ragus didn't contain tomatoes. Now Keith is here. He's going to show us a ragu that actually predates that classic red sauce. Yeah, that's right. Most people think of those ragu bolognese, that red bolognese sauce. Those red ragus are fantastic, but today we're going to do a ragu bianco, a white ragu. Oh. It's similar, shredded meat, uh, aromatics, usually has some white wine in there. We found a lot of recipes that have boar, uh, duck, any type of game that you might find. We're actually going to go a little simpler. We're going to start with pork. So the first pork we're going to use is four ounces of pancetta that I've chopped up here. Now, this is going to form our aromatic sofrito. So I'm going to put that into our Dutch oven. Mm, beautiful, a little cured pork belly. Yep, and now I'm going to add two thirds of a cup of water. Now, a lot of recipes would simply start to brown the pancetta, render that fat and juices, but we found it was much more efficient to start with some water. The water is going to help bring out all that fat, all those juices, and then we're going to evaporate that liquid and create a wonderful fawn. So I'm just going to put this on medium high heat. And that's going to go eight to 10 minutes. All right. Now, sofrito also has a vegetable component. You think of carrots, celery, and onion. Sure. That's the traditional sofrito. Uh, we're actually going to get rid of the carrot and celery in favor of fennel today. We like that herbaceous flavor. It's a little bit more lively, a little fresher in flavor. So I have one large fennel bulb here. Uh, you can see that I still have the fronds attached. Before I discard these fronds, I'm going to take some of these smaller little pieces off right here. So these fronds have kind of a subtle fennel flavor, but we're actually going to use them as a finishing component for the final dish. We're going to treat this like an herb almost. Gotcha. It almost looks like dill. It does look like dill. I'm going to give that to you for safekeeping. All right. Now, like I said, I'm going to take these top fronds off, just set these aside, and I'm going to take the fennel bulb, cut it in half. I usually start with a core up so you can see where that mm -hmm. is and have it right down through the core. And then just hold it like this. Take the tip of your knife and cut that core out on either side, just like that. That's great. And if you're a little afraid to use a chef's knife to do that, you can use a paring knife to yep. get that core out. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can chop fennel. Some people treat it like an onion, so put it cut side down and make horizontal cuts followed by vertical cuts like you would with an onion. So we're looking for a fairly fine chop here. It'll melt down a little bit as we cook it. Okay. Now, the other way is to take these pieces apart. And that way you can lay them flat on the cutting board. It's a little easier if you've never chopped fennel before, if, you're right. kind of, if it's a foreign vegetable, it's much easier to kind of create a smaller pile of strips to cut through. Okay, so our fennel is done. This smells fantastic. You can see we have this nice rich fawn. You can smell that pancetta. That's gonna add a ton of flavor to our sofrito. So we're gonna add our fennel bulb. Again, one large fennel bulb that we finally chopped. We're also going to add one large onion that we finally chopped. I'm just going to stir this in. It's going to be five to seven minutes. And what we're looking for is the fennel is going to soften, the onion is going to soften. And we'll get a little bit of color. Okay, it's been five minutes. Our vegetables are nicely softened. I'm going to add four cloves of minced garlic, two teaspoons of fresh thyme, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of pepper. And we're just going to stir that in until we can smell that garlic. It shouldn't take about 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, now. For our liquid component, we have two cups of water here and a third of a cup of heavy cream. Not a lot of heavy cream. It just adds a little bit of velvetiness to that sauce, a little bit of richness, but we don't want so much that it overwhelms the pork flavor. Okay, so we have our liquid component. We're gonna turn that up and bring that up to a boil. All right. Now we can add our pork. Now I have a one and a half pound pork butt here. So what I've done is I've taken this and cut it in half across the grain, gotcha. just to shorten those muscle fibers up a little bit. All right. Okay, so now that we've brought this up to a boil, we're gonna cover it and we're gonna actually braise this in the oven. Oven heat is a little gentler, a little bit more even than cooking on the stove top. We normally braise at 300, 325 degrees. We're gonna braise at 350 degrees here. The reason being, we want to create some fond around the edges of the pot. It will boil, it will create a fond on the side, and we can scrape that down and add a little bit more flavor later on. So we're gonna be in the oven for about 90 minutes until that pork is nice and tender. Okay, so it's been 90 minutes. We can check on our pork now. Oh, it smells delicious. Remember I was talking about that fond around the edges here? That's exactly what I was talking about. That's gonna add a lot of flavor to this. Oh yeah, that pork, it feels nice and tender. I can feel it with my tongs. It's barely holding together. That's a good sign. While it's in the oven, all that collagen has broken down into gelatin. It's gonna be nice and tender. It's gonna be nice and moist. 
but also very, very flavorful. I'm gonna recover this and let that fawn steam for about 15 minutes or so while that pour cools down. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes and we should be able to scrape our fawn into the sauce now. If you have any stubborn bits, you can take some of the sauce on your spatula and kind of get more liquid up on the sides there. Okay, so I think we've gotten all of our fond in there. Now I'm just gonna finish this with some lemon juice. I have a quarter cup of lemon juice here and one and a half teaspoons of lemon zest. Every time Keith stirs the pot, the most amazing blend of aromas come out of there and the lemon just added to that. Now we have to finish letting our pork cool and we can cook up the pasta. Okay, so I'm shredding this with uh, two large forks here and that allows us to kind of pull these pieces of pork apart and get rid of any fat that we might have missed during cooking or trimming. You can see how this pulls apart so easily, but it's still really moist, oh, yes. tender. I'm just gonna put this back into our sauce here. So that's our sauce. We'll just cover that, we'll keep that warm while we cook our pasta down okay. here. We're gonna cook Parpadel pasta today. We like these nice broad egg noodles, very hearty pasta, very tasty pasta okay. too. So I have four quarts of water here to boil. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of salt. This is just table salt. I'm gonna add 12 ounces of Parpadel noodles to this water. I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. And we're gonna cook that until it's al dente. We'll drain it and then we can eat. All right. That begs the question, what exactly do we mean by al dente? Well, pasta is composed of starch granules and protein. When you boil pasta, the starch granules absorb water and start to swell. Eventually, as the process continues, the granules burst and they release starch into the cooking water. In a piece of pasta, this process happens from the outside in. The granules on the surface of the pasta are the first to swell and eventually burst. As the surface granules burst, the inner granules swell and so on. When a piece of pasta is al dente, the innermost granules are just beginning to swell. If you overcook pasta, those inner granules will swell and eventually burst, and you'll end up with waterlogged and bloated pasta. Okay, so we should check our pasta, see if it's done yet. Just hook a little piece here. Hmm, perfect. Great. Perfect al dente. So before I drain the pasta, I want to reserve some of this starchy liquid to finish our sauce. Okay. So I have about two cups here. Just set our pasta liquid aside, and then we can drain this pasta. All right. So our pasta is ready for the sauce. We're just gonna put that in here. And I'm gonna stir in some Pecorino Romano cheese. Little sharpness, little nuttiness. Mm -hmm. I have two ounces, which is about one cup, finely grated here. And I'm gonna add three quarters cup of this pasta liquid. And I'm gonna save the rest of that. We don't wanna get rid of that quite yet because that will allow us to loosen our sauce if we need to after it's okay. cooled. Okay, we're just gonna to toss this in here. We're gonna let this go for a couple minutes. We want that cheese to kind of melt and dissolve into that sauce. Okay, it's been about two minutes and you can see that the cheese has melted in there nicely and now this is our adjustment period. I'm just gonna taste the sauce for seasoning. Mm, that's great. And I also wanna check for consistency as well, but this looks really nice right now, so we don't need to add any more liquid. But what I am gonna add is our two tablespoons of fennel frond that I chopped earlier. Gotcha, ah, oh, beautiful. Get another nice light hit of that anise, that little bit of licorice right at the end. Oh. Beautiful. Okay, it's time to eat. You can see that little bit of heavy cream in the sauce is really coating that pasta nicely. The heavy cream and it's the gelatin from the pork as well. It's beautiful. A little bit more pecorino here at the end is a nice touch. Lovely. All right, I'm just going right in for the holy grail here. Go the, for it. The pork. I'm not kidding when I say this is one of the best pasta sauces I have ever tasted. Isn't it? It's rich without being fatty. It's bright, that lemon juice. So good right at the end. Yeah, when you hear the name ragu, you always kind of think heavy and you know, kind of big, bold flavors. This has big, bold flavors, but it's really, really light, especially with that lemon juice and with that mm -hmm. fennel. The fennel, that's what it is. It gives an earthy sweetness. It's got a little bit of that licorice flavor, but it's not overwhelming at all. And actually, anise, fennel, the more that it cooks, it softens and it sweetens. It almost becomes caramelized. Best pasta sauce I think we've ever done. Thanks, Keith. You're welcome. For an authentic ragu bianco, start by rendering pancetta. Cook onion and fennel, and then add heavy cream and water to the pot. Add pork butt, and cook it all in the oven until nice and tender. Add lemon juice and zest. Shred the pork and add it back to the pot. Toss in pappardelle, pasta cooking water, and pecorino romano, 
and then sprinkle with fennel fronds. Serve with a little bit more pecorino. So from America's Test Kitchen, pork, fennel, and lemon ragu with pappardel, AKA Ragu Bianco. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.